morning, everyone. I'm State Representative Jane Garibay, and welcome to On the Porch. So I've been hearing from a lot of constituents concern and trying to understand what reevaluation is and how it's going to affect our taxes. So I'm very happy today to have Josh Gaston, who's the Assistant Assessor with the Town of Wis Windsor. Welcome, Josh. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's good to have you. Um, I'm sure you've received calls also. Yes, we certainly have. And there's a lot of misunderstandings out there. You know, people are spreading misinformation, some information. So I really wanted to talk in layman's term where a regular person like myself would be able to understand how this is going to affect me and why. All right. Um, so let's start. You know, how, what is revaluation? What is it? All right, so essentially, because the town has a property tax and the tax is proportional to the value of the property, the town has to place a value on all properties in town. And over time, as the market changes, those values drift away from the actual market value. If all properties increased or decreased in lockstep with one another, mm -hmm. that would make our job much easier, but because different types, different classes of properties, whether it be, you know, a 700 foot condo or a 2,700 20, square foot colonial or a gas station or a warehouse, those all increase and decrease at uh, different rates. Right. And so by state statute, we're obligated to value properties at 70% of fair market at least every five years. So in the span of five years, actual market values drift, and so our 70% drifts as well. And this is essentially a realignment and bringing all the property types and classes back to parity at that 70% level. Right. So one of the concerns I hear is, oh my God, my house increased 50%. There are houses, properties that increase 50%. Does that mean my taxes are gonna go from 4,000 to $8,000? We certainly would not expect that, no. Um, these changes in values represent that shift from the last reval in 2018 to the current market value in 23. And we certainly don't anticipate taxes to increase by the same amount as property values. Typically, if values decrease, you'll see an increase in the mill rate, so the town makes up for it with that increase in the tax rate. And similarly, when property values increase, you see a decrease in the mill rate. Um, now, because of the rapid pace and the extent of increases in residential property mm -hmm. and the disparity in um, increases and decreases in commercial properties where you certainly had strong growth in say apartment complexes or warehouses but you've seen large decreases in office buildings particularly the large uh, corporate campuses right. that have really taken a hit and never recovered after the pandemic and has offset a lot of the other commercial increases. So there's a disproportionate increase on the residential side that's right. being... Right, but I know uh, my fellow colleagues at the Capitol, when they hear that our tax burden, 40 to 50 percent, is picked up by the commercial side, right. That's a real benefit and that we have, in past years, one of the lowest increases in the state because of that commercial. How does that all work in there, the commercial to our homes? How does that, you know, they're kicking in more so we pay less as individuals? If you only have houses in your town. Exactly. If there's only residential property, then the full tax burden falls on the residential taxpayer. Um, the greater proportion of real estate that's commercial or industrial, the more of that is picked up by the commercial and industrial property owners. Um, we've seen a significant, like I said, a significant shift between 
uh, the grant list from one year to the next, but it's not in an overall unprecedented place. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a quite similar breakdown to what the town saw, say, back in 2013, and the residential had even more of the burden prior to that. What was it, like 65%? 65%, correct. The tax burden on the homeowners. And now what is it? Is it? it it's about that 65%. So it has and again, there's multiple pieces of this. Right. This is in regards to just the real estate. Right. So in addition to the real estate portion, there's the business personal property, which then decreases the residential burden. So when we're the, bringing in business to Windsor, it's very important because it helps keep our taxes lower. Absolutely, yes. Those um, big projects, et cetera. So oh, go ahead. I guess I kind of skipped over. Um, you had asked specifically about, you saw a 50% increase in the mm -hmm. value. And it I kinda, is not a 50% And I kind of wandered, yeah. wandered away from that. Um, <clears throat> we've seen, you know, quite a large degree in that, you know, let's say about the median is 50%, so there are going to be greater and lesser increases. Um, as the mill rate gets set in the spring, that'll ultimately be what determines the... What is the mill rate? So essentially the mill rate is the tax rate that's applied to the assessed value. Okay. So How do we get that tax rate? Like I have no clue. Okay. Um, so you take the assessed value, you multiply it by whatever the mill rate is, and then you divide that number by a thousand. Okay. And that's what's going to end up being the actual tax amount. Okay. So I know this past year we had a mill rate of 33.6. Mm -hmm. As the budget gets set uh, by the town council this spring and it goes to referendum in May, we would certainly expect to see that mill rate decrease um, below that 33.6 level. Okay. Yeah, it's very complicated, but there is, isn't there on the town's website, you can go and click and put in, and it can tell you what your, what's happening with your, what your home is assessed at? Absolutely. Um, and the, to calculate your taxes even? Or not, no? You can't calculate your taxes at the moment. Right. Um, essentially, the page that shows the tax calculation only becomes available after the budget process right. when we have the new mill when rate. You have the real, because if yeah. you were to apply last year's mill rate to this year's values, you're going to end up with an inaccurate tax amount. Um, but there's two places on the assessor's page where you can um, look up your property or neighboring properties. You can put in the street. Um, one is the revaluation results, and that'll show you the before and the after of both the, both the appraised and the assessed value, as well as that percentage increase, again, in the value, not in the taxes. Mm -hmm. um, I think everyone just received mm -hmm. the notice. Correct. Because I know even my husband was like, oh my God, 50%, exactly. oh my God, you know. <laughs> exactly, and we, again, we don't expect increases to, uh, in the taxes to correspond with the increases in values. Right. So. Right now, everybody is worried. When will they know? Not until we pass the budget? Correct. Um, you won't know what the actual taxes are um, until you, we have that mill rate, and that'll be decided through the budget process in the spring. Okay. Um, what else should people know about it? I mean, it's uh, kind of like just no, sitting tight, right? No. Well, yes and no. The other things that people should know is currently right now, um, well, they are scheduling informal hearings. So if you have any questions about your property in particular, or if you think that the property was incorrectly valued, if you think you have additional information that might not have been taken into account, we would strongly encourage you to make an appointment. Uh, I think all the contact information is on our website, but it's... Uh, 
can either schedule an appointment. Yes, it's right on there. If you yeah. go and you hit that button right on the main page, I yep. was looking at it. There's both, you can schedule them both online or you can call and make an appointment. Right. Um, and meet with a representative from uh, Vision Government Solutions, who was the uh, appraisal company that we used for this reval. Um, I think they're taking um, appointments up through the 21st is the last day that you can schedule. Of December. Of, of December, yes. Okay. Um, I think that's the last uh, scheduled appointment time, so you have to schedule before that. Um, we can meet with them, go over the details of the property, the two things that essentially you'd be looking at there is, is there anything factually um, incorrect that you, you say know, I have three bathrooms I only have two exactly thing, right? that's exactly the kind of thing you'd want to bring up at that point that's a fairly easy fix to make that correction mm -hmm. and that makes all of our data better and all of our values more accurate um, and then the other thing would be that you're looking at the overall appraised value of the property mm -hmm. not that 50 percent increase it's you know could you sell your house for that. Um, in today's market, probably. <laughs> but most of us want to stay in our homes. You Absolutely. know, we're not looking to sell, so that increases kind of, you know, maybe some down the road, um, but not right now. Do you know for a reval, what does an appraiser look at? Is it the paint on your walls? Is it the structure? I, what things do they take into consideration? So essentially, during the reval, you're taking a look at all the sales that have occurred in town within the last year. Okay. And you're extracting from that the values associated with the area that the structure is built in. So you have, you know, a certain dollar amount per acre that's then modified by whether it's residential or commercial, whether it's in this part of town or that part of town. And then you have the structure itself. What style is it? How old is it? Um, how many bathrooms does it have? Does it have a finished basement? Um, it, has it been well maintained? Is it in good condition? Has it been uh, recently renovated? Has it never been updated? Right. A garage goes mm -hmm. through. Correct. Right. All and all of that is then essentially ex extracted out of the 300 odd sales that we've had in the last year and then fitted to those sales to accurately reflect those actual sale prices and then reapplied to all the other properties that have similar features but that haven't sold. To do. Yeah, that's very interesting. So it's, it's, um, it's hard to look at now, but it's a good thing that our houses have the value. And we've all been watching how houses have gone out of whack since COVID. I mean, I've never Correct. seen such increases. Is this unique to Windsor or Connecticut, or is this across the nation? Um, home prices have certainly skyrocketed around the nation. Um, as far as Connecticut goes, we're seeing fairly comparable, slightly less increases in towns that conducted a reval last year because they didn't have this final year of increase. Mm -hmm. You know, my crystal balls is murky as the next person, so right. who knows what happens this upcoming year. But I would expect the towns that are doing a revaluation for next year are going to be seeing very comparable, if not possibly greater increases if the market continues to trend upwards. Yeah, I kind of think um, that we're kind of lucky that it's every five years because COVID was about five years ago, four years mm -hmm. ago and house prices went right yeah. up that first year. So at least we've had a little time to prepare. Mm -hmm. um, as co-chair of aging, I'm always looking out for our seniors. And I know th there are programs, I don't know if you have information on that, that help them. Yes, um, probably the main program is the homeowners program, is what it's called. Um, it's a uh, income-based program and you have to be 65 or older or 100% Social Security disabled and under 65. You have to own the home, 
reside in the home and your income has to be under a certain level for this past year um, taking into account the town's local option that has a higher in, uh, income level than the uh, state requirement I believe it, the income was 55,400 we would expect that to change slightly going forward this year um, as the state raises their limit based on the Social Security cost of living increase. Is it a cliff, what they call a cliff? It's, you know, you're one dollar over the 55,000, you don't qualify, or is it graduated? Unfortunately, it is that hard limit of that 55,600. And that figure represents the, the adjusted gross income plus any Social Security that isn't included in the adjusted gross. Mm -hmm. um, and that application period is between February 1st and May 15th. Um, you'd come into the assessor's office, okay. you'd bring in your income documentation, we'd fill out the application with you there in the office, uh, and that um, bent tax credit would be applied to this upcoming July's bill. All right, because it's hard when you're on that fixed income um, and I know statewide we um, phased in that you don't pay taxes. I believe it's a hundred thousand, seventy-five to a hundred thousand in income, whether through Social Security, annuities, pensions. You don't pay um, taxes for the state of Connecticut. You All do right. on the federal level. So you know both town and state have been really trying to help measure. And then it used to be a cliff. It's going to be phased in, you know, a little bit of a phase okay. up. And we upped the, um, it was pretty low for a combined. So, you know, everyone was going to run out and get a divorce so they could both get it, right? You know, <laughs> you know so we upped the level for, um, you know, two income families, which All was right. good too. Um, so our seniors um, can do. There's other programs, and I don't know if that's in your wheelhouse, and I'm kind of diverging mm -hmm. a little bit, but I know there's um, help with your property. There's, like, grants through the town. That is I, a different... That's a different department. Different, I can't... Yep, yeah, that's fine. I know there is something, and we'll, we'll look into that for another, you I know... I believe that's the community services department. Okay, but there is help out there for people that need it, that own their own home and you need to repair. That you can get a grant to do repairs, correct. But this all brings, because I'm very much in touch with the development in Windsor Center, and I am so excited <laughs> that, you know, that's going to bring in, not all, for me it's more that it's going to make our, I live near the center, I like walking in the center, it's going to make it safer, more interesting. But it's also going to add to our tax rolls to get these the buildings, you know, filled with good businesses. There's going to be more apartments, um, and younger people they want to live near where they work, you know. Absolutely. And and not it just where they work, but they want to be able to walk to the grocery store, walk to, you know, the that's always nice <laughs> pharmacy, right? So, um, and Windsor Center is a beautiful, you know, for the first town in Connecticut. You know, very beautiful. Yes, it is. So is there anything else that you think people should know? Um, if you're in about, doubt, give us a call, right? Or an email. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's somebody in the office from 8 to 5. You can certainly give us a call. We can go over any questions that you have. I'm sure my uh, husband will be one of those callers. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it's good. It's good that people can find out, but find out the truth. Don't believe everything you see out, especially on social media and different, because I just knew that our taxes could not go up 50%, you know? Yes, and we... Is it going to be difficult? It's going to be a little bit difficult. Because of that shift from commercial to residential, we would ex expect an increase come July, but we have no way of telling we the don't degree, know what it's going to be yet. And it certainly won't be the, d the degree that the value has increased. Right, right. So that's the, I guess that's the main point, um, you know, the public, that all of you should know is that it won't go up 50%. We don't know what it is. We have to wait and see the process out. Um, I know the town manager has budget sessions starting in January where you can go and learn about what the budget of the town is 
and what they're, you know, what they're thinking the budget is going to look like, um, and ask questions there also. So, okay, yes. anything else you'd like to leave our listeners with? Um, nothing in particular. I think, you know, we've covered the overall increases that it doesn't correspond to the tax amount. That is the um, most um, important. That the other portions of it include uh, motor vehicles, business personal property, and then ultimately the budget and the mill rate, yeah. and the informal process. And I really enjoyed learning that in 2013 that we're at the same level almost, right? Correct. Our, um, you know, what So essentially the Degre the rate that property has shifted over this past five years is quite rapid, but the proportions that are left at the end of it are certainly not unprecedented and look very similar to how the town has in the past. Right, and how fortunate we are to have the commercial side. Because yes. some towns do not, especially the rural areas, and so it all falls on homeowners. Correct. So, well, thank you so much, Josh, for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Um, if you have updates, we can do another um, show. And I want to thank for every, everyone for listening in. This is um, Jane Garibay and Josh Gaston signing off, and have a nice day.